Welcome to the 2019 Canadian High School Ultimate Championships. We are here at the gold medal game at Carleton University in Ottawa between Kelvin out of Manitoba and Bowmanville from Ontario. Rebecca Thompson here on the play-by-play -play joined by Mitch Kaufman. And Mitch, we are about to see a rematch of the 2018 final. Yeah, it's exciting. Both teams were able to come back this year and make it to the finals. So we'll be, we'll, it'll be interesting to see if they have a little bit of extra information on each other. I was talking with the Kelvin coach a little earlier and he said he thought he saw them playing most of the same system. So we'll see if they're able to identify that and kind of know how to stop it as they were the winners last year, of course. Yeah, winning that game 15 to 11. These games this year are only being played to 13. They are 75 minutes long, even in the final game. So shorter games, but lots of time for us to find out who the champion will be for 2019. Yeah, and it's a beautiful day today. You know, there's a little bit of a breeze, but not too much. The sun's coming down. So it's just the perfect conditions today for ultimate, if you ask me. Yeah, a little bit hot down on the turf for some of these players. This is their third game of the day. But I don't think when it comes down to a championship game that that's going to affect them too much. We did see a little bit of cramping earlier in the semifinal, but not from Kelvin. So we'll see how that goes on into this game. For now, we're going to have Kelvin in the white jerseys on the left side of your screen. Bowmanville in the dark jerseys to your right. And Kelvin will be starting us off on defense in just a minute. Yeah, we're just waiting to get going here. You can see them with the disc getting set for the pull. See if they can't come out with a quick break and get themselves on the board, or if it'll be the talons from Bowmanville able to get the first score of the game. For more than half of this Bowmanville team, this is their first ever CHSUC. The other half, of course, was in the finals last year as they will get us underway, centering immediately to the middle. Defense a little bit slow to get down off this first pull as the Huck faked right away. Walker resets the disc. Rice upfield. Open space as Rice gets it right back on the one and two. Rice has the cut coming upfield. Goes oh. for it. The layout attempt, but just out of the hands there. Yeah, and uh, Kelvin starting with that person defense. A little bit of a looser person defense there. But we'll see what they're able to do on offense now. Wilson puts that over the top of a zone look here from Bowmanville. Knockhart. Combining there with Peterson, Peterson and Wilson have been the staples of this handling unit for the Kelvin Clippers as that one is going to sail too far ahead of Tramley. Can't quite get there. Immediately Rice and Walker will combine in the middle. That's two. Open cut upfield looking for the next option here. Quig finds Smith, one of the captains of this team. Haley Smith has definitely been around a while and she will unleash a huck looking for the end zone. That one's going to fade out of bounds, give a chance for Boyda to get his hands all over it. Yeah, and Haley Smith there, you mentioned her. There's three girls from the same family all playing on the Talons this year. So an exciting time for that family for sure. Zone look again and Wilson tries to huck through, but the defense picks it up, immediately going back the other way. Open space in the middle. Now Rice. Going one and two with Smith, but Smith, you could see, just thinking about the next throw already. Yeah, the feet were moving before the hands were there, so unfortunately just a quick drop as a big huck coming in from Kelvin. It's Wilson unleashing once again, looking for Tramley in the end zone, and Kelvin will start the scoring here. That is a break to start the game at 1-0. Yeah, and just, just a nice throw. Tramley was able to get a step on his person there in the end zone and go up and get the the disc there for the score. Quinn Wilson had a huge impact on the semifinal game as well. He had three goals and three assists, combining for six out of their 11 points that they ended up with, already with an assist to his name here. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of Wilson throughout this game. Yeah, he's one of their captains, definitely someone they look to to kind of set the tone for them as a team. It will be interesting to see if they're able to continue it with another quick break here on defense. That's exactly how you want to come out and start a gold medal game. That's for sure. Get one on the board, get the jitters out of the way, and then just get to playing some ultimate. 
So Bowmanville already on that point coming out in their signature zone defense look. I'm sure regardless of the weather, we will be seeing them continue to put that on. It did pay off. They caused Kelvin several turnovers before Kelvin was able to figure it out. So I'm sure we'll be seeing more of that as well. Yeah, and we mentioned at the top that Kelvin's coach did think they were playing the same zone as last year, and it seems like they were. Maybe take a few times, a few trips down the field to understand how you're going to get the break through it as we're just waiting on the pole here now from Kelvin to get this next point underway. See how Bowmanville responds off of that break. Wilson set to pull here for the Clippers. That one's going to sit up near the middle of the end zone here. As Bowmanville will collect Get their offense moving. Smith dishes it back to the middle. Going one and two towards the sideline. Now Grace Smith finds the option under. DeFour up line looking for Smith again. Goes just over her head. Bobbled off of her teammate. Wilson will pick up here. The zone look already, and he goes for the huge hammer, looking for the back of the end zone, and it's going to sail way out the back. Boyda going to catch it anyways, but too that's, far gone. That's the wrong end zone. You know, that our end zone stopped before this football field's end zone. So right idea, wrong placement there. And I wonder if we'll see a few more of those <laughs> shots, especially with Bowmanville setting up that zone so close to their own end zone. Yeah, exactly. He thought he, could, he, thought he had his man there beat and uh, just too deep. That one went over Grace Smith's head again, but it was reeled in by her teammate. Smith now unleashing. That one's going to hang up, sitting in the air. Three receivers, and it's Wilson who comes down with it, snags that one out of the air. But there's going to be a call back on the throw, and it looks like a foul call. The disc will return to Smith. Yeah, lucky break there for the Talons as we play on now. So uncontested foul call. Smith resets. DeFour looking upfield, finds his option in Croxon. Logan DeFour, a mainstay handler for the Talons as well as he looks for that option, finds it in the middle. Kelsey Croxon now resetting with Smith. That one goes too low and in front of DeFour. Good bit attempt, but can't quite get there. Yeah, it's Kelvin's turn now on offense, see if they can't get a break. You see them always sending one down deep. Wonder if that's their key to breaking this zone defense the Talons have employed successfully so far throughout the tournament. As Wilson blades that over the top to Diamond Burchuk. Going one and two with Wilson. Trying to find those holes, find it, and the layout attempt there from Fast, but too far away from him. The zone already causing problems for the Clippers. Yeah, and ooh, another drop there from the Talons as the Kelvin's going to get lucky <laughs> and get another chance to get a quick break here. Wilson, five yards from the end zone, puts the around flick, looking for Boyda in the back corner and into the wrong end zone once again. Just trying to create some space through the zone there and the wind, I think, picking up a little bit, catching that one as well. Yeah, he saw his man had the outside area there try to get a nice put into him and it just kind of carried into the wrong end zone so yeah the wind definitely has picked up here even from the first point of the game to now we can see the flags blowing so a different set on the field here as they try to look for grace smith and find her see knockhart on the mark down there smith looking for the next option resets into the middle Bowmanville trying to find some space and get it on the near sideline. Not a lot of cuts coming from the stack here. They finally find one with Croxon. Yeah, they're gonna. seems like they're going to try and use that full 10-second stall count to get their cuts going as we get a nice big huck here. That one is slowly coming back towards the field, but all of the players had started to run out of bounds, but it was touched by the defense, so it does need to stay some discussion on where to set up the pivot as Wilson will get us back underway here, centering to Marshall. Knockhart and Wilson now combining. 
Wilson unleashing another huck, looking for Boyda in the space, and he's sucked in by the defender. A little bit of a misread on that disc. Yep, but luckily it's all the way at the other end zone, so a good time to reset for uh, Kelvin, reset their defense, and just play a nice, good person defense. DeFour swinging it around to Hodgson. Looking for Croxton upfield. That one hangs up. The layout, but it's just sailing out of bounds as well. Looking for an opportunity here for Kelvin to extend their lead. Some discussion. Maybe another foul called on the play. Yep, back to thrower here. The point will reset. And we'll uh, see if the Talons can't solve some of these early game jitters they seem to be having. Another layout catch there from DeFour. There was a hand block touch on the throw, and he does well to keep that in possession. But running out of options, has to unleash another huck, and that one's going to sail out of bounds past the stands. And a gift back here to Kelvin. Yeah, and it didn't stay in bounds, so sometimes when you go for a huck like that, you're just looking to pin the other team in their zone and wasn't able to as that unfortunately never came back in play. Yeah, late stall count throw there from DeFour. Was running out of options. We've mentioned it before, but the stacks, the stacks cuts taking their time to come out there from Bowmanville. Like you said, the full 10 seconds. And I think in order to adjust to the pressure defense from Kelvin, they're going to have to start those cuts a bit earlier. See if they can make those adjustments right now with Wilson going through the middle to Gillis. Knockhart combining with Wilson. Has the far side Diamond. option. He's going to see it looking for Diamond Burchuk in the end zone, but it sails over her head. <laughs> Plenty of time for DeFour to track that down. Yeah, and DeFour's just been that deep zone D that you want back there. Moving all over the field, able to get the Ds, able to start the playoff strong too when you do get those Ds. Smith now. Doesn't have an undercut coming, has to unleash it instead, and it's going to sit up in the middle of the field. Lots of coverage. Gets tapped down. It looks like there will be a foul call. There were several players in the area, so not hard to imagine why there would have been some contact, but unsure if it affected the outcome of the play. Yeah, we'll see what the resolution here is, see what happens. So contested foul call. We'll return to the thrower. Goes straight upfield, but sails over Hodgson's head, and Wilson scoops it up. Immediately going to fast. Has Gillis. Diamond Burchuk around now to Marshall. Still the zone look here from the Talons as Wilson will reel it in. A little bit of static cutting from both teams. That one going around, and... Gillis Good. rips it out of the air, immediately going cross field. Boyda has Wilson with the reset, hits him. Wilson not throwing that big around into the end zone this time. Just the one, two dish all the way to Boyda and the Clippers in celebration. They make it 2 0. Yeah, and another break point there for Kelvin. Uh, they were able to get the turn on defense, and you can see once they got down there, they kind of knew what they were going to be looking for. Absolutely incredible play there from the Clippers. It took them several attempts on offense, but this time Wilson making some adjustments, not going for that big cross field throw, the one too easy pass, and that is the other way to beat a zone. We see these players trying to go for those over the top looks, but those one two fast breaks between the defense, that's how they're going to get past the zone. Yeah, and when you're playing that zone, sometimes when you get so close to your end zone, you want to switch into that person defense because the zone isn't always the best call and I think the talents just got kind of caught up there within themselves once their zone got broken but they're starting on offense here see if they can't get some of those cuts from the stack starting a little earlier and see if they can't get a point on the board to kind of stop the momentum from Kelvin here definitely interesting the talents are a team who hold that zone defense all the way into their own end zone a lot of teams usually opting to melt out of it when they get into that final third but it is something that's worked for them in the past. I mean, it's worked for them all weekend. They're it's back in this here. championship game, exactly. So I don't think we're going to see them adjust out of it just yet. They're only down two points and two longer points to start this game as well. So they know that they've been causing Kelvin 
to turn it over, maybe just needing to value it more when they have the disc on offense? Yeah, you know, it's still early in the game. I think we've only played maybe 10, 15 minutes, so lots of time left. We'll see if they do switch out of it, if they happen to give up one or two more. But if they're able to get one or two onto the board, then they'll probably just stick with it for the rest of the day. So the big signature flick pull from Tramley comes up. Bowmanville back out on offense with Walker and Rice, two main handlers on this line, combining already. Walker stuck with it a bit now, has to go under. Good job to break the mark there. Already looking for the next option. There was some contact there, but I think Walker recognizing he had dropped the disc before gives another opportunity back to Kelvin. Peterson, Tramley combining one and two through the zone, the quick passes, working it up the field. And there was a call, I think possibly a travel call. Does sometimes happen with those one, two quick passes. Yep, so the play's going back there from where the travel occurred. The zone will get reset, gives them a chance to breathe, and uh, the play will get underway. Sam Peterson taps it back in, goes over the top to his brother. Riley Peterson looking for that little over-the-top shot as well, and then into the end zone, oh. keeps her legs in bounds for the goal, and the Kelvin Clippers starting this game strong at three to zero. Yeah, a real good break point there by Kelvin. They got the turn, no drops this time. The zone didn't really get a chance to set up and they were able to move their way down the field and get that point. I think that's a great point for Kelvin to think about as well. Moving the disc quickly before that zone can even set up and no problems, they were off to the races immediately. Yeah, you could see it, the quick one too. Get the zone moving, get that cup moving so they don't have a chance to get set up and get that hard pressure onto the handler as uh, Kelvin takes a quick 3-0 lead now. So I think at this point if you're Bowmanville they do need some sort of response out of three unanswered points here in the championship game. Definitely some great defense from Kelvin but Bowmanville as well making a few of their own mistakes so just needing to bring the game back into their control. Yeah we talked about it Half their team, it's their first time here at CHSUC. Wonder if some of those pre-game final jitters are happening, some of those drops, some of those missed throws. Just Their timing just is off by the littlest of bit. See if they can't fix that and get themselves back on track here in the finals. So Bowmanville back out on offense. Seeing some familiar faces on the D-line here for Kelvin. They've kept the likes of Peterson Still out there in Knockhart, as well as Megan Gillis. Kelvin almost always opting to go with four women as well. And when you have the likes of Megan Gillis on the line, see her get looked to a lot. She's played with the National U-20 team this past year at the World Junior Championships in Waterloo, winning the bronze medal. She'll be on the U-24 mixed team this summer in Germany as well. She was sick yesterday morning, and no surprise, Kelvin went to a Universe Point in that game yesterday morning. She's back now and we saw her have an impact earlier today. So we'll see what happens. But for now, Bowmanville on offense with Haley Smith, who's gonna look deep, was getting stuck in that area. And Wilson comes in with the help defense, immediately moves that transition, trying not to let the zone set up. Now they get a chance to set as Wilson stuck on that sideline, goes lefty through and it's picked off on defense. Rice was reading that one all the way. Walker now almost picked off this time by Kelvin. Bowmanville trying to hang on. This would be a hold for them. And a point that could help change this game as they go for the hammer. It goes low and just out of the hands of the receiver. Gillis got her hands up there. Probably affected the read of the receiver there in the end zone. That big blade and now trying to put one in front of Wilson to run onto, and it's just gonna trail away from him. Yeah, but again, they punted it down, so there's a reset of zone here. And as they're walking to the point, it gives a chance for Talons to get set up with their preferred offense. So we see Rice and Walker, the two handlers back there for the Talons again. Haley Smith in an initiating position. 
See them look to Smith right away in the middle. Smith has the under option in Rice, but she didn't see it. Went big cross field instead. And Ooh. somehow it's caught. The second effort, Wilson tried to get there on defense. Talons did well to hang on there. As now Dufour is looking for the next option. Has Walker in the reset. Walker faking the big pump there as now he hits Dufour up line. Smith in open space has the undercut but overthrows it. The big layout attempt there. Kristen McQuig tried to get there, but it was just out of her reach. Yeah, she had a great cut there to come into the corner of the end zone and just out of her reach, unfortunately. Some of those pregame jitters, big game jitters, still seem to be affecting the talons a little bit. Yeah, and unfortunate because that was one of the most open opportunities they've had to score a point in this game. Wide open up line, the defense hadn't caught up, and then open cut in the end zone. And I think maybe just a case, like you said, jitters getting a little bit too excited about the opportunity. Yeah, you got to take a deep breath there. Even though you have some time, you want to make sure to get a good throw in as Kelvin starts working back the other way. Kelvin not trying to let them set. Goes for the big around. Collected by Toddle on the end zone. And then an unbelievable layout grab. Quinn Wilson comes down with it through the pressure. Makes this game 4-0. Yeah, Kelvin going with those quick points like we talked about to break the zone there. And just a real, real quick put into the end zone by Kelvin and Quinn Wilson able to come down with it afterwards. Incredible grab from Quinn Wilson. Toddle there as well, moving all the way up on that strike. She didn't even hesitate to throw it into the end zone and maybe just a little bit of trust knowing that a player like Wilson can do everything in his power to get to the disc. Yeah. Sometimes some of these players, if you just put it up, they're going to try for it, and it's usually better than a 50-50 chance they'll come down with it. So unfortunate for Bowenville not to get away with that point. They will call a timeout now, and Mitch, I think at this point, definitely good moment for them to regroup. And if you're the coaches down there, I mean, most of these athletes have been in these situations before. What do you say to them to get themselves pumped up again? Yeah, you just got to tell them to calm down, you know. You don't want them to get too far ahead of themselves. There's lots of game left. No sense getting discouraged. Start with one point, you know. It only takes one to get the ball rolling again. You can build off one point. They almost had that one in the end zone. Maybe try to get those stack cuts starting a little earlier too. I think that's a big key for them. Their stack cuts seem to be coming from the back, and sometimes when that happens, the po it takes so long within the point that by the time that cut hits the top, all of a sudden you're at stall six and you have no choice but to punt it away. Absolutely. We've seen them have to make those punts several times, so definitely something they might want to readjust, especially with the likes of Wilson covering that deep space. He has come away with six or seven Ds already in this game, and so he will look to threaten them in that space. And maybe just not something Bowenville has come across in this tournament yet. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure of their path here to the finals, but it's – rematch of last year so half their team do know about this kelvin team and the threats they have and it's up to those half that was here last year to kind of lead that new half this year yeah and that being said kelvin only graduating three players from last year to this year as well so definitely they've all had this experience have some incredible players who played in big games and so they're ready for this so yeah the returning players from bowmanville just needing to carry through those new players and we were talking about this before the game but they are quite a young team as well the Bowmanville Talons only with three grade 12 players on their team and of course three grade nines as well so it's a real mix here for Bowmanville with half the team being new so yeah they will lose their two captains in Will Rice and Haley Smith as well as Sam Walker but you look at the rest of the team and like you said those three grade nines they're in back-to-back -back finals here. We could be seeing them for three years in a row in this championship game. Yeah, it's a great learning experience for them. Of course, you don't want to treat a finals as a learning experience. You want to come in here to win. So hopefully the coach said the words of encouragement he needed to say. We'll see if Bowmanville aren't able to come out here with a good building point, nice and strong, work some flow, wait for their shot that they'll be needing to take, and then get one on the board. Anything can change in one game of ultimate. So we'll see how this one progresses for now. Kelvin 
four straight unanswered points to start this game. And all break points, too. It's true. All break points. I didn't think about that for a second. Yeah, yeah. They started on defense. They haven't had a chance to get their offense out on the field. So. That being said, I think we'll see a lot of the same players from their offensive to defensive lines. Cassidy Knockhart, Megan Gillis. Haven't taken too many subs yet. And see Wilson finally taking a break in this game. I think they know that they have a, a chance for those players to rest. But you never want to get complacent in a game. Not in this situation. Gold medal on the line. Back-to-back -back gold medals for Kelvin on the line. Truly is incredible when a program can achieve such things, especially at the high school level when you graduate players. Yeah, and it's not like they're a new team either. You know, the program was founded in 2003, so they've certainly been around before, although they've only come to CHSUC a handful of times. So l great to see them able to sustain some type of success here as the pull comes in from Kelvin in the white. So Rice and Dufour working it upfield, trying not to let the defense come down. We're seeing... Kelvin still in that person defense set. We have not seen a zone from them once in this tournament. Just trapped a little bit by the defense. Going for the reset. It's too far in front of Smith. Knockhart streaking to the end zone. Peterson holsters that one. Instead combines with Tramley. Now Boyda on the end zone line. Has a couple upline options and hits it with Adam Fast. And that will be another goal here. The Kelvin Clippers right out of that timeout make it 5-0. Yeah, and again, just a small miscue there by the Talons. Just a s out of the reach there with the disc. Kelvin get the disc and quickly, like we were talking about, able to break that zone and just keep moving against it. Don't give it a chance to get set up and get their fifth point on the board. So we'll see if the Talons can respond at all. It's disheartening to come out of a timeout and not be able to achieve your goal. Had a bit of a miscommunication on that one. Still lots of time though if you are Bowmanville. No need to get too down. No need to try anything too risky yet. Usually wait for that coming out a half if you're still unable to get one so we'll see what they're able to plan for themselves as they're there waiting for the pole as they're getting set up with their offense it's not quite what you expect from a championship game a 5-0 lead so the two top teams of this tournament but maybe just those nerves still taking an effect Yeah, I think the Talons may be a little shocked now. They look a little bit. You see them walking out to the line and everything. Time for their those half of the team that were here last year to be able to step up and start playing and start making just some crisp passes, you know. That's all it's really come down to is the Talons just seem to be half a step off, unfortunately. So easy remedy there. Just start small, some good, clean, crisp passes. Wilson will get us back underway out of the, the point here. Collected by Dufour. Not a lot of options coming right away. The defense, plenty of time to get set. Smith now looking upfield. Gets her option with Hodgson, who resets it right back to Smith. Now looking around to Austin Hodgson, and it bounced off his face, maybe catching some sun in his eyes. Hard to tell from here. Yep, but again, it's just a small miscue. That's been happening this half. All points for the ta to the Talons, unfortunately. As Ke Kelvin come with a quick point back and into the wrong end zone again. And it's worth noting that it's the third time for Wilson trying to hit Boyda as well. And each time Boyda has struck deep, it has been shot out the back. So for him... Maybe a little bit discouraging having to make those sprints over and over again, and Wilson will want to readjust that throw. But Yeah, you wonder if Boyda said something to Wilson before the game or something. 
was maybe making fun of him for having some bad cardio. Who knows, because he keeps putting it too long into the wrong end zone. Definitely a little bit of the downwind side going this direction for Kelvin. So maybe Wilson just not adjusting his throws. Yeah, we see a classic vertical stack coming out now from the Talon. So we'll see if they're able to get those cuts started sooner in the stall count or if they're going to still come from the back and give it a second or two to start. DeFour gets us back underway. Doesn't hit his first few options. Goes to Grace Smith up line. It pops up. I think it popped up in the wind there, and she just misjudged the catch. Wilson on the end zone. Yeah, definitely caught something in the wind as just at the last second. She thought she had him just, just off the tips of her fingers. And immediately Marshall into Boyda in the end zone. The Kelvin Clippers in command of this final. 6-0, to zero, one more point to take half. Yeah, and that would be a huge momentum going into half two if they were able to get it without letting Bowmanville get even one point as they're up 6 nothing here. Kelvin out of Manitoba playing in the white jerseys. And again, it's just small, small miscues that's hurting the talons right now. Just off the fingertips. Throws just out of reach. They just need to get, need some positivity to start going. Just start working down the field. Get to half first before you start thinking of the end zone. Start doing something that you can build off of for the next half. Definitely. I think at this point, being 6-0 down, Managing to get one point in before halftime could be a huge mental shift for them. You never want to go into halftime down 7-0. to zero. Really build that confidence by ending this half with a point for themselves. But, I mean, of course, on the other hand, Kelvin want to keep that momentum going. So they're not going to make it easy on the talents here. Yeah, if you're Kelvin, you don't want to let them get a point. You know, you want to go into halftime up 7 nothing. So we'll see what the Talons are able to come out with as they're waiting for the pole to come in here from Kelvin. Pole's going to sit just in bounds on the near sideline. Walker will center to Rice. Straight back into the hands of Sam Walker. Good cut. Looking for the next option. Not coming out of the stack. He's forced to look for the reset and Bobbled out of the hands. Walker has done that a couple times up line now. It's going to gift an opportunity. The Clippers looking to take half, but Peterson had no mark on him, so just taking his time. Resets to the middle for Gillis, who rips it out of the air. Upfield now with Marshall. Yeah, and it looks like a person defense coming out from the Talons here. First time we've really seen a switch from them. Marshall trying to find the next option, but it's bobbled this time out of the hands of Sam Peterson. An uncharacteristic mistake, and we'll see if the Talons can take advantage as Smith tries to move it quickly to that far sideline. Yeah, McLaughlin with another good sideline cut there. Fakes the deep, then comes back in on the under. Haley Smith has the reset option, but isn't looking for it. Now trying to put it in front for Sam Walker to collect, and Peterson comes in for the D. He got up big for that one, and those are championship moments here right now as Knockhart collects in the middle. Yeah, just had waited too long on the reset there, and no other options were able to get open. Looking for the next one as Knockhart consistently seems to find herself open in that space. Immediately gets it right back. Has the deep option going, but looks instead to the sideline, but overshoots. Sokowski couldn't quite get there. Interesting now with the Talons going to person defense on the turn. That's two quick turns back in their favor. So see if they're able to take advantage as a hammer's coming out. There was as well a call back. So I think if it had been caught, it would have returned to the thrower. It looked like a travel call, but nonetheless, Peterson comes in to get that Dia. Huge 40-yard hammer there from the Talons and maybe just trying to do something special to create some momentum as right now Peterson will air that one up. It's going to hang towards that far side of the field and Tramley decided better than to try to jump for it. A little too far over his head. Yeah, the Talons again get another chance to get one on the board here. 
see if they can't start putting something together. Walker has the under option, but looked it off. Instead, goes to Smith. Smith running out of options, has to go up, but it works out in her favor, escapes the defense, and now too far in front, but the layout catch to get there, and the Bowmanville Talons, you can see how much that means to them. They have gotten themselves on the board, now down six to one. Yeah, just a real good building point there for the Talons. Not really the way you wanted to do it, but being able to get out there and cheer on your team there before half, that's really something they'll be able to build on here as hope as they're going to look for a stop now on defense and hopefully get a break point for themselves. Of course, if they can get a break here, it could be all the momentum shift that they need to go on a run. We've definitely seen big comebacks before and with plenty of time left, there is more than enough time on their side to do it. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if they come with the person defense or their standard zone look. As we talked about, that last point was the first time we've really seen a person defense from the Talons in this tournament. So the first O-line on the field for the Clippers. And no surprises, the same faces as their defensive unit back on the field. The likes of Boyda and Peterson, Quinn Wilson, Got Knockhart and Gillis out there as well. Diamond Burchuk. Some names we've said quite a few times. Talons, of course, trying to put on a big defensive line here to get a break. And a lot of the same faces there for ta the Talons too. You can see Dufour. You can see Smith. As they're trying to get the crowd into it now, they're feeling it. They know they're back in this game all of a sudden. They know they have a chance to turn the momentum in their favor. Boyda will center that one to Knockhart. Finds Peterson in the middle. The person-to-person -person D as a huck comes up looking for Wilson in the end zone time to track it down. And he misses the catch, uncharacteristic from Quinn Wilson. You can see him slap the ground in frustration there. But a chance for the Talons to go the full 70 yards for a break. Yeah, Talons there, an uncharacteristic miss from Kelvin. And the Talons now have their chance to get their break point on defense, as Kelvin's done to them seven times. So DeFour will walk this one up. Yeah, and a vert stack again from the Talons, although we have three handlers starting now instead of the two. Immediately into the hands of Grace Smith. Looks upfield, gets a big yard gain as it gets worked through to DeFour. DeFour looks up any deep options. The defense covering well back there. Has Grace Smith and finds her. Going one and two now. The options hanging out a little bit deep here for the Talons. They got a big reset if they need to, as he's now moving up the field. It's a question there of a double team call. Wilson was a little bit close to his teammate. You can see him in that poach lane defense. Inside, and that Ooh. one low but scooped up. Talons moving up the field really well here. See if they're able to put it together and get a point in the end zone. Hammer comes out. And it works out for them. The huge spike in celebration. Two receivers in that space. And just like that, Bowmanville get themselves their first break of the game. They close the gap to four points. And Mitch, what do you think about that hammer option there? I think it was a team catch, really. We saw Hodgson come out with it, but there's another teammate there in the end zone. They kind of sandwiched it together and made sure that they weren't going to be denied at that point. And just like that, a four-point deficit doesn't seem like that big of a mountain to overcome anymore. If they can put a couple more points to their name on this board before halftime, it could be a completely different game in the second half. And we see the Clippers taking a timeout, just trying to slow down 
any momentum, I think, here from the Talons. Yeah, it will, it'll be interesting to see if they come out with a strategy shift. They had been preparing to play against that zone defense that the Talons are so famous for. So now with the Talons going to a person defense, see if they don't enact a big strategy shift into how to break this person defense. It seems to be working for the Talons with two with a break point and then even on the turn for their first point they're able to get it turned back in their favor and put point on their bo on the board. So Kelvin taking a moment here, Bowmanville as well. Bowmanville has had trouble getting going in this game, but seeming to have figured out their movement now on the field. Yeah, and it is hot down there, so they're definitely taking advantage of their timeouts, especially with so many of the same people playing point after point, want to make sure they get their water, want to make sure they get their chance to have a, bre a breath. Especially when a lot of the same players are playing on multiple points at a time. Not getting too many breaks in between. The little timeout can be a huge help. But they're still young, so they're fine. You know, they, they don't need to worry about it too much as we're here at the Canadian High School Ultimate Championships from Carleton University. So a chance to be out on offense here. See if Kelvin can close it out for halftime. Bowmanville seem to be extremely amped up now. Yeah, we talked about it as they were, went for the pole on that last point. They're trying to get the crowd into it, trying to hype their team into it. It doesn't take a lot to get the momentum swinging in your favor. Yeah, and there's no doubt that the crowd wants an exciting game here as well. One could argue that there might be more Bowmanville fans in the crowd as well as we are closer to Toronto than Winnipeg. Not sure how many parents have traveled here with the Clippers, but that being said, the rest of the crowd here definitely cheering for the most excitement possible. Yeah, of course. And what's better than a good underdog story? Being down 6 nothing, and being able to make a comeback. I think this place would just start to go crazy. So Bowmanville set to pull. Get us back into this game just after the timeout here. Still looking for halftime in this championship game. Currently 6-2 to two for the Clippers over the Talons in a rematch of the 2018 championship game that... Kelvin did walk away with in a 15 to 11 win. So that pole sails out of bounds and Sam Peterson, grade 12 student from Kelvin, will walk to pick it up. Yeah, and it does look like we're getting that person defense again from the Talons. So it's been working for them so far. Better than their zone has been at least. So we'll see if they're able to get another turn and another break point. And like you mentioned earlier, Mitch, Kelvin was aware of that zone defense from Bowmanville. They saw it last year, so just a little bit more prepared for it maybe than this, but Wilson and the Kelvin Clippers back on offense. As Wilson gets it back, and he's going to shoot deep. A laser of a throw sliding for the catch. Looks like he might have been just on the end zone line as he taps it in. Marshall, now Peterson on the doorstep of halftime. There's just some confusion over a call maybe. Looks like a travel call signaled by Walker. Tramley didn't think he was going to get to that disc, had to slide into it. That disc was coming in hot from Wilson. And some good defense there from the Talons player as well. Marshall, right on the end zone line, resets to Wilson. Wilson pops it up into space for Gillis, and that will do it for halftime. Kelvin Clippers not rattled by those two points from Bowmanville, and they are up 7-2. to two. Yeah, that's what you needed if you're the Kelvin Clippers. Bowmanville talents were able to get two quick points, start the momentum going in their favor. You just want to get to half, get a chance to reset, and decide how you're going to come out and attack in the second half. So we'll be back in about five minutes' time with second-half action from the gold medal game here at the 2019 Canadian High School Ultimate Championships in Ottawa. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the 2019 Canadian High School Ultimate Championships. Second half action of the gold medal game between Kelvin and Bowmanville about to get underway. Kelvin with a pretty dominant first half performance up 7-2. to two. Mitch, what do you think we're going to see in this second half? Well, I think the Talons are going to stick with their person-to-person -person defense. They started out the game and really all tournament with a zone defense. It's kind of their classic play, but it wasn't working for them. They gave up six points real quick off the bat, down 6 nothing. We saw the switch go to person-to-person, -person, and as soon as that, they made that switch, they're up 2-1 in the game, so they'll definitely be sticking with that. For Kelvin, just keep it going. You know, you're up 7-2. You can almost see the finish line, although you don't want to. You want to put those blinders on, just keep playing the way you've been playing. Because really, if the Talons have one or two catches here, one or more, two more crisp throws, then it's a, a lot closer game than 7-2. So Bowmanville, unfortunately, having to start on defense out of half. So looking for a break right away. We'll see if we'll see that same defense. Looks like it will be a person-to-person -person defense here as Wilson will pick up for the Clippers. Immediately looking deep for Knockhart. All the way into the end zone. One pass score out of halftime. And that is what Kelvin does best. They make it 8-2. to two. Yeah, really. I mean, not much to say on that point. Uh, Knockhart was able to get a step on her person and just kind of take it into the end zone just like that. A great throw from Wilson there. Obviously adjusted it not to throw it out the back of the field this time. Well, it wasn't Boyda running. So we know if Boyda was running for that point, it would have been into the end zone for the fourth, maybe fifth time today. Definitely did look like a set play there as well from Kelvin. It's the first thing that Wilson looked for was Knockhart, and she was almost already in the end zone. Yeah, they so. kind of identified the person-to-person -person defense and just, you know, they had that play set up coming out of half and were able to take advantage of it and get themselves another one on the board. It's so one thing Calvin's been able to do well throughout this tournament is readjust to different looks that have been thrown at them. They had that tough game yesterday morning. They were down a few points. With about eight minutes to go, they managed to rail off a few quick ones and bring it back to a universe point. And since then, any time they have been tested, they have readjusted, and that's brought them back to this championship game. And at this point as well, only five points away from back-to-back -back championships. Yeah, again, you don't want to start looking too far ahead if you're Kelvin, though. That Those five points could take 15 to 20 minutes, and the Talons could even get themselves six quick ones the way Kelvin were able to, and next thing you know, it's a tie game. Yeah, only about 25 minutes remaining in this championship game. See, Tramley likely with his signature flick pull here. As it comes out going to hang out of bounds unfortunately it's an opportunity for talents to take advantage of it yeah it'll be a real good start on the field here for the talons as some uh, new faces coming out to start the half here so walker with tramley on the mark has smith on that far side Instead, goes to Grace Smith, who works it upline. Good holster there from the Talons. Now into the middle. That one was too low anyways. Tramley making sure it was put into the ground. Yeah, really needed someone to make that in cut a little sooner there. Tramley has Peterson going, airs it out. That one's going to hang up, sitting towards multiple receivers, and it's reeled down by the Bowmanville player. Jay gets his hands to that one. Now Walker again. Looking for Smith. Grace Smith trying to air it out. Looking for Haley Smith. That one's going to hang all the way into the end zone. Somehow just over the hands of Haley Smith. And Tuttle managed to get the defensive play. Yeah, just hung up a little on her there in the right near the end zone. But a real casual hook there by Smith. I was really impressed with that one. Took me for granted. I thought she was going short with it. The wind has picked up. We're starting to feel it up in our booth now as well. So definitely might have an effect on this game as Peterson puts that one into space and multiple players colliding with each other. 
That disc falls to the ground. Everyone seems to be okay. Yeah, I definitely don't want to see injuries, especially in a gold medal game. Smith looking for the next option. Has Rice going up line, puts it in front, and instead the defensive play, De Roche gets his hand to it first. Straight into the middle now for Tramley, who's going to shoot it deep, looking for De Roche, tracking it down. It just falls in front of his feet. And unfortunately, unable to get to that one, Talon's looking to take advantage. Yeah, Talon's here need to just calm it down a little, you know. They gave up that point right after half. They need to start, relax, go for those nice throws, especially with the wind picking up. Smith resetting to Walker. Walker faking that upline shot. He's looking for Jay. Brody Jay into the center now for Grace Smith. Some sort of call upfield. Looks like a pick call as the players are just resetting. Peterson was catching up to his mark. This will stay in the hands here of Rice. And an injury sub as well. Haley Smith comes off the field. Hopefully she's okay as St. Jean takes her spot. Rice looking to the far sideline for Walker. Now all the way over to Grace Smith and it's just out of her hands. Tried to go for the catch and unfortunately gives the disc back to the Clippers. Peterson just resetting. Now looking for Sam Peterson. That one's gonna hang towards the back of the end zone and fall just out the back. Neither of those players really had a shot of getting there. Nope, nope, but again, wrong end zone. Different end, wrong end zone. Not Boyda going deep either this Not time Not Boyda going deep, so. But that last point for the Talons there, we kind of see the game story for them just off the fingertips or even before that, a, just a misplaced throw by the slightest of margins and see if they can't put something together as we keep having to mention. It's, it's just the smallest of small errors here that seem to be doing them in. Grace Smith on this near sideline now has Jay in the middle. Going one and two. Some pressure defense there from Diamond Burchuk. Looking for Walker up line. Walker has some options in front, looking for Smith hanging in front of him. Chance to track it down, but Peterson gets there first. Yeah, I wonder if that's just the wind starting to pick up there. You can see Smith thought it was going to die a little sooner, and then it just took off right over his head. Tramley to Diamond Burchuk. Finds receiver upfield. Cornelson put that one all the way into the end zone for Marshall. Lindsay Marshall with the goal. And the Kelvin Clippers have put on a dominant show for us today. Two straight points out of half. They make it 9-2 to two in the gold medal game. Yeah, if you're the talents, that's just a couple of wasted opportunities. You know, they had the chances there with it going deep. A few tough throws off the hands. And it's just, just like that, Kelvin is able to put it back into the end zone as a point against. You know, and I'm not sure anybody would have expected such a, a blowout score in this championship game as well. These two teams were much closer matched last year. Maybe some of that experience showing in the fact that Kelvin only graduated three players, whereas more than half of the Bowmanville team is new to this event. But yeah, the experience is definitely showing. It's showing for sure. Kelvin isn't getting flustered. There'll be a turn. There'll be a mistake, and they're able to just progress with the point whereas the Talon seem to be making a mistake they take that extra half second to kind of react to it before continuing with the point so Kelvin looking to extend this lead Talon's looking to go on some sort of magical run here in the championship game there's still time it could still happen so if you're the Talons, you just want to start getting some points on the board at this point. Doesn't matter how, you just need to start getting some points on the board. 
Just over 15 minutes remaining in the gold medal game, so nearing the end here. Not completely out of sight here for Bowmanville, but they have to get going. So that's gonna sail out the back of the end zone. So Defour will get to walk that up to the brick mark. Yeah, and he's just walking it, you know. Yeah, that might be a, a sign of how the Talons feel right now. If it's a little bit of a closer game, it'd be interesting to see if he would have ran it out, saved some time on the clock. But we'll be it, good to see what the Talons are able to do on the point now. So Defour walks it all the way up. Brick mark, 20 yards out from the end zone. Gets the receiver on that inside sideline. Had a couple under options, instead goes back to the same line there. Glockland looking into the middle. Croxon. And that one snatched by Hodgson. To four now. To four. Trying to go for that same hammer look that he has hit before, but there I think was a some foul called. There was some contact which does explain how that throw turned in the air. It's like it's uncontested. The players shake hands. Disc back in play now. That's picked off by the defense. Riley Peterson gets his hand to that one. The grade ten student here for Kelvin. Yeah, and just a throw behind McLaughlin there. Just, just, just behind him, you know. It's the story of the game. We keep mentioning it. Just off the fingertips, just a bit behind the receiver. If they're able to just clean that up a little bit, it'd be a lot tighter of a game. And Megan Gillis this time shooting for Knockhart in the back corner of the end zone. And she just can't come away with it. Some pressure defense there. Megan Gillis unleashing. We haven't seen too much of her in this game, despite the dominant performance so far from Kelvin. Yeah, Knockhart there with her second chance in the end zone. She, of course, got the point right after half. As the Talons now walk it out of the end zone and with the chance to get another one on the board with their vertical stack that they've been using all game. Defour has the open under with Hodgson. He wants it right back. We've seen Defour try to go one and two on a lot of these throws. Gets it up line now. Croxon under, keeps her feet in bounds. Not many options coming from upfield. She has to put it into space and somehow it's collected. <laughs> nice grab there from Diceman through the coverage. DeFour is now going to look for the end zone and it's snagged. Wilson was watching that throw the entire way. Fast. Wilson, see him pointing for the reset. Instead, goes up line. Now has a deep option and he's gonna go for it. Airing that in front of Peterson. And just too far away. Again, that is the downwind side of the field, so the disc just carrying a little bit further than he expected. Yeah, but again, it's the talents are just just missing out on that little bit. But props to Kempville or Kelvin, sorry, as they're able to just continue to put the points on the board and keep the talents kind of in their own end. And a huge defensive play as we're saying that. Adam Fast gets his hand diving to push the disc to the ground. Chance now 10 yards out of the end zone here for the Clippers. Hitting the reset in Riley Peterson in the middle. Puts it in front and into space. Looks like he just had one toe outside of the end zone line there. Wilson has the easy dish in. Peterson keeps his toes in bounds. And Kelvin make it to double digits at 10 to 2. Yeah, and there's not really much more to say. You know, it's just kind of been one of those dominating performances from Kelvin and just one of those days you wish to forget if you're a supporter of the talents. Kelvin, everything going right in their favor right now. And I think especially in the second half, we've seen their defense really ramp up its intensity. Bowmanville 
trying to do the right things, but with defensive plays like the one we just saw from Fast, it is hard to get things going. Yeah, at this point, Kelvin definitely see the finish line ahead. They're in the 100-meter finish. They're just trying to get there as quick as possible and get to the celebrating. Bowmanville, a lot to build for. Are you mentioned before, Mitch, you never want to view a championship game as a building moment, but the number of grade 11 players on this team, they are going to learn so much moving in to next year, and that could be an incredible year for them. Of course, time will tell, but definitely a team who has the potential to stay in this championship game. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't be a surprise to see them back next year with so many of their players in grade 11 and, of course, three grade 9 players as well. I think we were talking about only three of their players are in grade 12. So certainly a lot of experience will be there for them next year if they're able to make it back all the way to the finals. Bowmanville has 13 players in grade 11. will be grade 12s next year. Clippers, on the other hand, have 12 grade 12 students on this team. So they'll be graduating. There are 11 grade 12 students. They'll be graduating quite a big core of their team. For now, the focus still on this game. Lee with the disc, looking to reset to Rice, and it's picked off by Boyda. Into the end zone, and Ethan Boyda with the goal. This time doesn't have to track it down, and Kelvin are only two points away from repeating as champions. Yeah, again, just getting a hand in there on defense. They can smell it now like chum in the water. The Sharks are swimming. They're ready on defense at all times, and Talons are just playing for pride at this point. You don't want to get shut out there in the half, so they're going to have to try to put on one or two points, it was hopefully. Absolutely, and it was right at the end of the first half that we saw them figure out some of those points. They managed to score two. They were down 6-0, brought it back to two. Now... At 11 to 2, it'd be great to see them score a couple more before Kelvin can close this out. Yeah, you want to see them get a few. You don't want to see them end on such a note. You want to see them be able to build on something positive going into the rest of their season. So, Kelvin, a few new faces on the line we've seen in the later stages of this game. Both teams have introduced some of their younger players. One of maybe only two points. We haven't seen Quinn Wilson on the field for the Clippers. So this pole will come up. Just, just skipped out of bounds on the near sideline, but Dufour will bring it in. Cassare still low on options, gets a little dish pass to Dufour. Still surveying for the next options. Those cuts from upfield still static. There's a deep cut going. They don't hit it. Now that one's going to sit up into the hands on the second attempt. Great catch there. Good concentration on that one. Uh, Diceman, that's the second time she's come away with a good grab with the focus. Now around to the far sideline. Into the middle. Some contact there, but retains possession. Cassare looking around. Defour back in the middle. And the defensive run through block. Rachel Mann tracked that all the way through. Gets her hand to it. Yeah, a spy there. Just waiting. She knew she could make that run as Kelvin's now looking for the game point. Nope. Two more points to go. Desrochers is going to put that looking for Mann for the double happiness as it sits towards the back of the end zone. And Mann reels it in, makes it game point, national championship point here for the Kelvin Clippers. Yeah, and again, it's just a matter of Kelvin smelling it now. They're running down all the discs on defense. They're doing all that they need to do, all the little things, just to make sure that they come out on top here with no more little scares like they had at the end of the last half, I guess. 
the, possibly the most dominant performance we've ever seen in a high school national championship final. 12 to 2. Kelvin at championship point right now. And it's great to see them introduce some of their younger players who are coming up just as big as their core players were. It looks like I think we're going to be seeing a line of all grade 12 students on the field. It's when you're about to win a championship point, you want to get your graduating players onto that pitch. Yeah, for sure. Let them enjoy the moment as this is probably their last championship point here for Kelvin. See Wilson pull. See the likes of Ethan Boyda out there. Tramley, Sam Peterson, Megan Gillis, Lindsay Marshall, and Cassidy Knockhart. See if they can close it out here. The senior group for the Kelvin Clippers. Just waiting on the pole here to get started. Wilson will put a big around backhand pull. He's going to catch the wind a little bit and sail out of bounds. And it looks like the coach for the Kelvin Clippers skying his player down on the sideline off that pull. And with the look back at him too, like, what are you doing? That's my disc. Goes around to Grace Smith. Smith on this near sideline, up line now to the hands of Rice. Bowmanville looking for a point, but it's dropped by Lee in the middle of the field as Sam Peterson will pick up. Yeah. Under to Boyda. Knockhart is going deep, doesn't hit it. Wilson. Looks like there was a call in the middle of the field. Travel call back with Boyda, so the disc will return. Wilson looking for Peterson up line, doesn't hit him. He's going to air it out towards the end zone, just out of the hand of Tramley. See how badly he wanted to catch that, but Wilson was running out of options. Yeah, he was getting down in the stall count there, just wanted to put it up so one of his teammates were able to come down with it. Walker now in the middle for Bowmanville. Also low on options. It gets touched by Tramley, who catches it. Discussion of a call. Foul back in the hands of Walker. Looks like it's uncontested by Boyda. Tramley, almost a chance at a Callahan there. To end it on a Callahan would have been something. Walker is going to air it out into several receivers. Brought down by none other than Quinn Wilson with the defensive play. Puts it around to Knockhart. Knockhart has Gillis going to the end zone and the Kelvin Clippers. That will do it. Championship winning point, 13 to two, a dominant performance. The Kelvin Clippers of Winnipeg, Manitoba are back to back national champions. Yeah, congratulations to them. It was all around just a good, solid game from them. The Bowmanville talents who finished second here just had too many miscues to be able to climb back into this one. All props to the Kelvin Clippers out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. An incredible display of ultimate that we saw here from the Kelvin Clippers. Back-to-back -back championships and how special that is for your graduating group of players. Megan Gillis with the final point of this game and... I said before, I'm not sure we've ever seen such a dominant performance in a final, but Mitch, an incredible game we just had. Yeah, it was incredible. That first half was a lot closer than 6-2. to two. We talked about it at the break, that if the Talons were able to just get a couple more discs into hands, a couple more throws just put a little better, the score would have been a lot closer, but they just didn't have it for this game. So whether that's a fact of playing six games this weekend, whether they the wind was getting to them or whether they got a little jittery here in such a big game back to back. Now second place finishes and a lot to build on for their program too. Incredible day, incredible weekend we've had here at the Canadian High School Ultimate Championships. 
the 2019 edition falling the same way as it did in 2018, the same final game. Lots to build on for the Bowmanville Talons, but for now, the Kelvin Clippers are back-to-back -back national champions. It's been a wonderful time commentating for you here today. For Rebecca Thompson, Mitch Kaufman, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll be back another time.